Hello everyone. There is a beautiful saying that well begun is half done. Today we are going to talk about this saying in our surgical day-to-day -day practice. I always teach my students whatever surgery you are doing, may it be an abdominal procedure or vagina or lab, always give two minutes for your planning because it will change the outcome you will see it. For example, whenever you are doing an abdominal hysterectomy or abdominal myomectomy or for that matter, even a cesarean section when you are performing, always take 30 seconds to plan the size and sight of your incision. Similarly, if you are doing a lap surgery, always plan your port placement because just placing your ports has the power to make your surgery very easy or very difficult. When you are doing vaginal surgeries, there are three things which you have to keep in mind. The first one is the placement. Placement not only of the patient, but of your assistants too. Second is retraction of labia. Now the anatomy is somehow like this, that vaginal surgery is the opening where we want to perform our surgical procedure that is covered with two flaps of labia on either side. What we have to do is that we have to take these two folds and retract those so that the surgery becomes easy for us. You would have seen in many videos fancy ring retractors which people use. However, if you ask me the truth, I have never ever used or seen my mentors or my teachers who are using those fancy ring retractors. I have always learned the art of putting label stitches and retracting the vulva beautifully so that the surgical field is clear always. And that's what I'm going to teach you today. The third thing is making a proper diagnosis. It is very important if you are dealing with cases of pelvic floor disorders or in particular pelvic organ prolapse. You will agree with me that many a times when the patient is in ward or is in OPD, it is not possible to make a correct complete diagnosis compartment wise because of multitude of factors. Always do it once your patient is positioned well and anesthetized so that you can plan the steps of your surgeries. Because once you start performing the surgeries, the anatomy gets distorted and then later if you think I'll see it later it is not always possible to get the exact idea so we'll talk a little bit about this also but basically today I want to teach you very very basics in OT that is how to put a good labial stitch to retract the vagina nicely to be able to work effectively so today's patient is already positioned well and is under spinal anesthesia. Cough. <coughs> Cough. <coughs> this is okay, what we say that checking for stress incontinence in OT. We fill the bladder with the help of a 4D catheter with 200 ml of saline and ask her to cough and check for the leak. So this particular patient has a mild to moderate kind of leaking as per our severity grading system because out of the four coughs, she leaked only in one. For the labial stitch, we use number one silk suture. First, take a bite from the most prominent part of the labia minora. The second bite from the incision near the groin fold and third bite it is from the drape. Now when you are putting the knot it is very important that pull all the sutures to the lateral aspect and put the knot there. If you do it opposite then the drape will be pulled towards the vagina rather than pulling the vulva towards the drape or towards the lateral aspect of it. See it again. The other side, how you will do because that becomes easy for the people, right-handed people. Take a bite from the drape, 
take a thick bite from the skin near the vulva. This is important. Otherwise, the drape won't remain fixed and will keep on getting pulled towards the surgical site. And the third and the final bite on this side is from the most prominent part in the vulva or in the labia minora. Again, put the knots towards the lateral aspect. Pull everything laterally and then put the knot towards the lateral aspect. Now the third bite is for the posterior retraction. Take a thick bite from the tissue in the area of the faucet and then take the bite from the drape. Here three bites are not required, two are enough. And again, as told before, put the knot away, pull the suture and put the knot away from the site of surgery. Now in most of the cases, these three labial bites are enough to retract the vagina well. But in cases like this, especially when the patient is very hefty, you will feel that this retraction could be done a little bit better by putting two more stitches. So rarely we put five stitches or two extra stitches to retract the vulva. The idea is same. A small bite from the prominence in the labia minora, second bite near the groin fold, thick bite of the skin and third from the drape on both sides and it will help you to retract the labia very very effectively and expose the surgical field very well. So once you have put these retraction sutures, the next thing is to make the correct diagnosis. Now for stress urinary incontinence, for a reason we have made this diagnosis before, because you must see it when you are still standing on one side. Once you are sitting in position in front of the vagina of the patient, it is not a good idea to ask her to cough and check for stress incontinence. Now you see in this patient, on pulling or on giving the traction, the cervix is coming only up to the introitus. But there is a big introcele here and also is the cystocele. Today I don't want to show you the entire surgery for this particular patient because the idea is to introduce you a little with the pre-operative preparation and pre-operative diagnosis of the patient. If that is done, it will take you a long way. So let's learn bit by bit and this was today's bit. I don't know whether you felt it was very simple or all of you knew it or were doing it routinely but I thought it was my duty to tell you each and everything which I feel is important and can change the outcome of this issue. Thank you.